Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're going to continue our No Shots Run Legendary Iron Man difficulty. No utilization of any ballistic weapons or explosives, and which leaves, uh, leaves us with only melee weapons and some psionics. We are nearing the end game and it is incredibly important to do this mission here in order to kind of counter number one the dark event for alien alloys but number two also to, uh, to uh, level up all of our remaining soldiers i would want to not use the psi soldiers on this mission our psi operatives uh, stay at home but instead we're going in with uh, four rangers and a hell of of um, a hell lot of specialists. So let me color code Zirkin real quick. Just making sure that he looks nice and smooth. There we go. Damn right. Two specialists, Sane and Sonar, will be on the case uh, today. Let's just double check. Yeah, Sonar and Sane. Yeah, that definitely makes sense to have both of them available. In terms of making weapons available and making utility items available, I would also like to take a look at what else is needed. We already get agility here on Diva, that is great. The next one in line, we got a lieutenant, sergeant, another lieutenant, quick feet would be the next in line. And he already got conditioning, that's good. I think Sonar already got a nice little upgrade as well. No, he does not. Which means Sonar gets the hit points for now. That is okay. Will mean that uh, he essentially will not be one shot and thus he will be able to continue healing. I tend to like putting hit points or dodge on my specialist just to make them a little bit more tanky. And for the Rangers, oh boy, we got some really nice items. Uh, Diva here uh, already has an armor. I would like to give him maybe the Hazmat West just to protect him from environmental um, events. We got Halo here. Let's give him the plated uh, armor thing. Zirkim can take the Stasis Vest. And another Mimic Beacon. Just out of curiosity, do we have enough to build another Mimic Beacon? No, we're requiring more faceless ones, but that's fine. Good, and we got a Mind Shield, Quick uh, Feet, Mind Shield plus Mimic Beacon. So we essentially got three Mimic Beacons and uh, three Vests. That's not too bad for now. Good enough for me. We need to sabotage a transmitter, meaning we got to hack it and or destroy it. I think sabotaging the transmitter is actually destruction of it. So we will need to make haste in order to get through all of it because the mission is very difficult. So we're likely going to find the hunter in this mission. Let's go, guys. Let's go. All right. I stand corrected in the destruction of the transmitter. Of course, I don't know. Uh, mind blank, maybe. It means we got to get to that transmitter. And the way that we're going to do it is by destroying the little transmitters on the way. The biggest problem with those is... It's a mission which is not super easy if you cannot just charge to them and use your weapons to destroy them. Essentially moving up in order to destroy them will take a lot of movement. Sonar here, by the way, very, very healthy hit point pool, as you can see. Confirmed. Just moving all the way to the door, opening it so we're not losing concealment. And I would like to charge as far forward as possible. I haven't even seen anyone so far. Much to my surprise, we've also not seen any of the transmitters. Usually they're placed somewhere along the corridor. Already there. 
their absence is a bit worrying. Double time. Getting it done. Good. Luckily for us, we got quite a bit of movement, and the network separation doesn't immediately start. But you can rest assured that this is going to be a very, very time-sensitive mission. Rolling. Oh boy, oh, it's super far away. Okay, there are probably there are probably transmitters over here, which is why I'm hesitant to to not spot them out. We would want to go down that route. Yeah, maybe we can dashing. do that here. Halop is not the fastest. We can aggressively dash. We can at least take a look for missing something which surprisingly enough we are not pretty sure we're going to see more transmitters like on this side so I want to be open for the alternative that there are more transmitters location confirmed Taking a very aggressive move, even being position. willing to like stand in the open. Solid copy. Wow, not a single transmitter so far. Nothing over here either. Just out of curiosity, let's open the door. I want to make sure that we're not missing anything in here. No, nothing. Not even on this side. Wow. Moving to position. All right. Moving out. Well, that's already two turns Moving with here. double moves done. And we've just triggered the enemy. Yep. Let's hope we're lucky and they're not immediately taking a shot. Really not much that I could uh, have done differently here. For the very simple fact that if we're not engaging or not rushing forward like crazy, we're going to run out of time. Like, see... We will need to destroy the uh, at least some of the transmitters. We cannot just completely ignore uh, them. This pack here is going to be incredibly difficult for us to handle. The Mutant is a pretty fierce opponent, and as long as we cannot like um, use our uh, dis uh, our flashbangs to disorient him or fear him there's a 66% that he will be retaliating any melee attack so the only thing to get around that sort of is to use bladestorm and position ourselves like right next to the mutant it's a bit of a trick if we're moving in we're very 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 likely going to trigger more so that in itself is an issue. What we can do is I can go into conceal. And try to scout out. And see if we can find transmitters over here. So far it's not looking very promising. Well, that's the first one. And that's pretty damn far away. But this here is going to be our Mimic Beacon. I want to attack the Mutant. 
Zirkin begins to charge in. Not much that we can do. We need to keep the network separation. Uh, the network from separating. Divad moves up here, and I like the idea of him having Blade Storm. Wow. Four armor is just so, so tough. Team working. Before essentially, I mean, combat protocoling him. Probably better off combat protocoling the mutant, to be honest, given that they are not dying with one hit, right? Right. I got to pull all of uh, the cooldowns now. Starting to deal damage to the Andromedon. It doesn't look too fancy, but four points of damage are essentially with four armor. They are at essentially eight points of damage. Gotta keep that in mind. Even these hits here are only hitting for four, so... Very nice. All right, he's stunned, meaning he's not going to make a move. Closing on target position All right, now. I'll try a little trick here and see if this works. So we want to place the beacon right next to the Bladestorm Ranger. Come on, I know it's possible. Game has already indicated that it is possible. See, that's the one thing about XCOM that I never understood. Why is it so difficult sometimes to position like it's a pixel job to get it there very good okay and instead of killing the andromedon well we could kill the andromedon right um and thus yeah let's let's go for that because when we kill the andromedon the shell will not be stunned i actually want it to not be stunned so that the shell attacks the um mimic beacon that will trigger blade storm so we're effectively increasing our damage output quite a bit and hopefully the mutant will take its melee attack which then again means that both of them are now up and taking a blade storm hit so many choices all right that really does not surprise anyone Immune to melee. At least we got it out of the system. What can I say? He's probably the best um, target for being immune to melee damage. Because um, you can charge him. Uh, you can charge him so incredibly well. And then the Templar is just tanking him whilst others are using... Yeah. Yeah, what are they using? Well, thigh abilities, I suppose. So little time. We're not having a lot besides pure melee capabilities, so not even sure how we're going to deal with him this uh, this time around. There's the blade storm, and that's a nice little hit. Unfortunately, not in level range yet.
Nice little blade storm. And the guy shuts down for two more rounds. Perfect. Venice one five. They're about to disconnect the transmitter. This is our last chance. Enjoy these final breaths. Yeah, can't really reach that transmitter. But we can reach this transmitter over here, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Even if it means that we're triggering another pack, because reality is, if I wouldn't do that... Well done. As we had hoped, the network separation has been temporarily delayed. Then the whole mission would be over. Gotta charge over and do the next one next turn. While still being kind of in a pretty intense battle here. That's our chance of getting the Andromedon shell. That's not a that's not an absolute bad investment to get that. 50-50. I can see myself taking that chance. Taking control. But it still continues to be there for now. So let's move over. I can still control it the turn afterwards and for now we're just going to kill the mutant clothing on target position now yeah not very efficient use overall Superior Expanded Magazine, it's a joke. We unfortunately don't need that. Delirium Core is good. Data Cache is also good. Item here. I'm on the move. Are we bold enough to just charge in? Yes. We got a Mimic Beacon, if push comes to shove. Okay, at least we got ourselves some time. Some extra supplies, not bad. Uh, you know what? I think I'll actually go over and take that extra round. Do I have to do everything myself? We know that there is another pack right there. Why exactly was he able to move again? That does not fully make sense, unfortunately. I was hoping he would not be able to move again, but I was clearly wrong. I thought I saw stun four turns, and that would have been fantastic. Can't kill the Chosen, not with this team. He's effectively immune to what we're trying to do. From what we've heard, he's a relentless tracker with an unnatural ability to call his shots. The only thing on the line here is your planet, Commander. No pressure. Hey, how do we most effectively get to this guy? We probably are not. Moving. This here is not line of sight, is it? No, it's not. Too close. Almost there, but not quite. Roger that. Yeah, I wish we could just charge in a bit uh, closer. We know that there is another pack over here. 
So let's do a couple of no regret moves, shall we? Number one, this thing here needs to go down. Okay, wonderful. Number two, this thing here needs to go down without hopefully pulling that pack. Alright, we got ourselves 70 supplies. That's fantastic. The pack is right here. So this here should not trigger them. Well, I was wrong. It very much triggered them and there is another pack right there. protocol without uh, threat assessment nope I don't want to hit either what I would want to do is get over here out of line of sight from the chosen and let's just place a big fat mimic beak into here shouldn't pull the other pack but instead just make both of them shoot at the mimic beacon and just for full protection let's make that a full cover just in case the chosen like moves up here and takes a shot at us uh the blade storm will most likely kill the shell okay well that was a pretty nasty crit That's the blade storm I was talking about. And that's the kill. Unfortunately, we cannot take it over. Oh, that's a really nice grapple. Nice. Well, that was wonderfully dodged. And his automatic healing, uh, the um, the vest has just kicked in, which is hilarious. Never really made that um, work, but in this particular run, might be quite handy. Okay, we can school mine, and we should probably do do that. I'll keep the mimic beacon here in reserve. Got two school mines that'll that is two instant kills that would be fantastic unfortunately this guy is immune this will trigger the other pack so you a sword to a gunfight Yes, we brought a sword to a gunfight. That is exactly what we did. This guy, there is a good chance uh, that the Bladestorm would kill him. But this will kill him for sure. X -ray neutralized. That's fine, we got the Mimic Beacon for a reason. Alright, off we go. Time for a school mine. Unfortunately, unsuccessful. Let's try that again. 
There we go. Wonderful. Um, we're just taking a little bit of intel. That's fine. It's still theirs. Some neurofeedback. Not optimal, but we can manage. Okay, um, we do not need to heal anyone. Instead of standing in the open and being a great target, let's just move there. Moving out. Moving a little bit closer for next round. Let's throw the Mimic Beacon to here so that all three of them can actually see them. I am aware that we're clustered up, so we try this, time? this here could lead to the mech uh, using its rockets. But yeah, it acts first, so nothing bad is going to happen. No. No. Probably going to take one shot now, because this guy here can shoot into the open. That's actually more convenient than taking a shot. I'm going to take some damage now, which is unfortunately not resistible, really. He's probably going to summon. Nope, he's not. Pretty solid damage. Pretty solid damage, but we can counter heal that. And as you can see, thanks to our pretty solid um, healing protocol, we can effectively engage just uh, uh, just after we've um, been shot down. So all it takes was one heal. Yeah, the hunter unfortunately takes zero damage. That's a real pain in the rear. I'll leave this one standing as cover for now. Oh, wait a second. Should have thought about that beforehand. Absolutely, let's try to take it over. All right, fair enough. Charging in further. There we go. Armor still holding. Kill confirmed. I almost feel bad for them. They've got no idea what they're in for. Yeah, the shotgun was helpful. That way, that way we don't need to uh, wait for um, for a blade storm hit or hope for a high damage blade storm hit. It's probably going to summon again. I I was just mentioning Shogun would be a great ability for him right now. But apparently they are just continuing to be an annoyance. Good. Heal and a protocol. There we go. That also takes care of Halop's problem with the bleeding. So far, we're still fine in terms of just counter healing.
Good, let's assemble it. That's a kill. Probably will not kill him yet. Nope, it does not. I'm on the move. Moving up. So the plan is to disrupt and then immediately leave. Well, just became a little bit more problematic. Cover my flank! Let's try something else. And he just continues being a pain in the rear. Not exactly. Subtle. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Moving in, I'm going. planting the C4, and let's hope that we can get out of here next turn. The X4 charges are active, but the aliens are still working to isolate the transmitter. Eliminate any remaining hostiles before they cut it off. My big, biggest problem is I'm not 100% sure if we can actually eliminate the hunter. He's completely immune to what we're trying to do. And unless I bend the rules of the run in order to kind of use that mind control unit here in order to uh, just shoot him down, which we could. Don't get me wrong, it would be long and painful, but it is entirely possible to use his own troops against him. I feel it somehow defeats the purpose just a tiny bit. Because we wanted a no shot run. And it's, it was entitled like no shot from Advan, uh, no shot from XCOM run. It's just straight up a no shot run, right? You know, let's just grab some more supplies up here. Cool. Oh, it's at least a hundred supplies. And we're jumping down. Headed there now. Moving into cover. And moving into cover over here. The elders created you for this. Now it's time to prove your worth. I generally like the concept of um, immunities, but I think it would have been better implemented if it mean uh, if it would be, for instance, immunity to the first um, melee attack each run, uh, each round. That way you at least have a chance to kind of counterplay it or overcome it with any different means. Immunity just for the sake of a complete immunity. I don't know. I 
I don't think that this here will change anything. Oh, maybe we can get away by killing those two. That might indeed change something. Okay, cool. Codex is cloning itself, unfortunately, on the worst potential spot. Yeah, only those two options available. Concealing ourselves. And I'm trying to stick sort of together. And by sort of, I mean kind of in a range where everybody here could theoretically get to an evac zone. Once we killed both of uh, the remaining enemies we should be good to go Moving out. that'll be a psionic bomb not a very surprising to be honest oh i was hoping he would use the rockets Yeah, go for the mech. Fantastic. This is my specialty. Fantastic. So, All right. Which one of your troops should I retire first? Very good. So we got ourselves kind of in the middle of uh, this pretty long-lasting, very nasty fight. We know that the mech is up there. I hope it's worth it. I hope it will jump down and move sort of towards us. Target location. Trying to fan out so Double time. that the rockets wouldn't hurt as much. Heading to that location. Yep, that's outside. Wonderful. And let's move over here. Move. Okay, cool. Decent split. Going dark. All right, concealing ourselves. And hunkering down. Right, Let's get this done. That's a blade storm. Oh boy, he should have triggered blade storm. Oh, the concealment prevented him from doing so well. Fair enough. He's mocking us. Zirkim still has some healing with his armor, so we're not going to overheal. There we go, that should end the mission. Does not. He definitely counts as a target. Copy that. And unfortunately, he counts as a target that we can not easily defeat. 
Probably not at all. I mean, it's just zero damage. But next turn, we're going to move out. Yeah, there is no point in trying to uh, fight him. Not with our current means. With a Templar. I would have even probably uh, tried to do it, mainly because after after a couple of uh, attacks, your uh, focus is up, and then you can unleash it. <clears throat> but this here is pointless. Staying in combat with him will just reduce the will of our soldiers. That will create even further problems. Understood. Moving out. Good to go. So we gotta accept that we couldn't beat him. Head home. For now. I'm out of here. I think we've still countered the dark event because we've done uh, what we're supposed to do. I think it will still count as uh, uh, countering the dark event, but we will have a problem. Good, let's take a look. I mean, it was clear that we would take some uh, days to recover. I think the one aspect that is nice is we got a bond upgrade here. We got a hundred supplies, an alarium core, and some intel. That is fine. Hello, Commander. And we countered uh, the dark event, which is all that I was asking for. It's kind of a partial victory uh, because we uh, successfully had done uh, the actual mission objective, but at the same time we were not successful, so it counts as a failed mission, but as a successful run. We also did not lose the region. And that's the important part. I've always found those extra dimensional beings to be especially irritating to hunt down. Yeah, he's going to be a pain in the rear. Gotta ignore him for now and find a way of dealing with him later. Come on, where's the null lands? Maybe Fuse isn't too bad as an option as well, because we can't really use um, explosives ourselves, but many enemies carry explosives. Might as well use them and explode them. All right, so we got that. Let's go to the black market. I mentioned that I wanted to take a look and we wanted to upgrade some of the things in the base as well. So purchasing, what do we have? Superior perception, useless. Yeah, not exactly what we're looking for. I mean, the Laram crystals are nice. Don't get me wrong. Berserk Corpse, yes please. Stock and go. Oh boy, it hurts to sell a superior expanded magazine, one of my absolute favorite upgrades. But yeah, we're you know what? We're keeping those uh, until they really want them, because that's when they are going to pay double. And we're okay on supplies for now. Let's double check what we can build. Super disappointing to not be able to build the Psy uh, lab. Let's 
Let's go with the laboratory. Don't have anyone to spare at the moment. And I think what we wanted to do is upgrade resistance communication. That is insufficient power. Okay, fair enough. Upgrade the power relay. Need a larium for that, uh, but I would actually like to do that. So we got plenty of intel. Market is open. I mentioned that I'm willing to buy the Alarium crystals. And let's try that again. Power relay, upgrade, Alarium conduit. Perfect. Upgraded. That frees up quite a bit. Um, so much so that we also got another engineer freed up. Resistance comms can be upgraded. We did, Commander. We've pushed our current power systems to the limit. We don't have any capacity to spare, which means we can't expand our facilities further. Good, and the freed up, uh, the freed up engineer. Uh, before we do that, let's actually get the laboratory. That'll help us to research faster. Good, very good. I also need to upgrade um, upgrade some of the uh, GTS buffs. That would be helpful. But yeah, overall that was pretty damn good. Uh, the facility here might be the next in line. I am waiting until the end of uh, the month because then I can take the resistance order to immediately make contact, which is why I want to push contacts quite a bit at this point. Might as well increase regional income. I don't see any, anything opposing that. More income means uh, that very soon we'll be able to really expand super fast. I will spread fear across this world. Yeah, oh, that is the problem. She's now Mixed. These chosen are constantly hunting us to try and recapture you, Commander, and are spreading terror. One more day until we'll we will find out where she, uh, where where her base of operation is at. We had some wounded soldiers required. And of course, Hogbite is wounded. God damn it! Rest, they'll be ready to get back to you. We just got some new intel on the Chosen. Pretty soon, we'll be able to take them down permanently. If we want to take out the Chosen once and for all, we should move Very to nice. their stronghold. Very the nice. Okay, that one is good. Point. Um, how about we're reducing Avatar progress? I think that that would be very much what we should try to do. Hacking plus four. Yes, please. Uh, let's take Sane. Sonar here needs to get up to that major rank. Taking a random soldier, some supplies, and they should be good to go. Covert is our specialty. Let's just hope your people can keep up. Good, because we're running a bit short. Like in nine days, um, the time. Um, the avatar progress will be reduced by two but we only have two more blips left over so we definitely could uh, use those extra reduction uh, how long is hogbite going to be out for 11 days ouch you know what we're just going to improve the healing uh, might continue that first. All right, that is another dark VIP mission. 200 supplies, 102 intel. The game really wants us to expand now, which is why it's throwing masses at intel, um, of intel at us so that we can uh, expand. And the extra supplies are coming in handy as well. 
I feel that it's getting harder and harder to really keep up with um, with what is happening. The, the Chosens are more of a problem than in the other runs. And why I feel that way is we're soon going to be shut down if we're not actively working against it. And the problem with that is once we're being shut down, I see little option for us um, to, to do that in time. Well, with a little option without sacrificing someone. The only way that we can regularly deal damage to the big cannon and uh, is to attack it with melee weapons. But only Hogbite is immune to the explosion. And the explosion itself deals, I think, 25 or 30 damage. So can't really put anyone near it um, without risking that person to go uh, down. You could use Psy uh, operatives, potentially in order to get it down. And that's pretty much about it. So that's really an, an issue, which is why I'm trying to uh, desperately get uh, the Chosen down. I will need to do some research and see how her sarcophagus can be killed so that we're, uh, that we're kind of getting her down before um, she even has a chance to ambush us. The other problem is, I think the only thing that the sarcophagus um, uh, that injures the sarcophagus is um, the lands, the null lands, and we only have one of those at the moment, and not even upgraded psi um, ms, right? So, hmm. That means I need to go into a mission. I need to find out where the null lands even works. If Null Lens works, I need to go into a mission. Null Lens deals like what? Seven to nine when it's fully upgraded, five-ish when it's not upgraded. So that will be a super tough battle where we're essentially fighting the Chosen like 10, 10 times to get her down. Void Rift if, or Soulfire, if that would deal damage to the sarcophagus, it would substantially reduce that time. But if it's only Null Lens, that is going to suck. Yeah, and if if worse comes to worst, um, we might not even be able to kill uh, the Chosen. Well, that then means I will need to somehow defend with just knives and two Psyops and, yeah, push back uh, the aliens that way. And probably try to store the game maybe for a few more months until we got enough uh, psi operatives uh, to finish the uh, finish the game with only one psi lab this here is uh, the limiting uh, factor i could go in with two psi operatives like two rangers a templar and a specialist it's probably not uh, a very good uh, team to be honest I much rather would like to take um, probably three Psy Operatives and a Templar. So that is four, one Ranger and one Specialist. Yeah, yeah. Worst, if worst comes to worst, uh, we might be able to, um, to do it with two Psy Operatives because I reckon they are taking a lot of time to just uh, train them up. Maybe we can recruit a second Templar, that would be absolutely fantastic, because two Templars together would be just uh, abundance, uh, so to speak. Uh, they would really rock. Alternatively, yeah, two Rangers, one Specialist, two Psyops, one Templar could probably do the last mission as well. The more Psyops, the better is they are kind of unlimited in in a way that they are uh, in the, the way that they are acting also keep in mind there is a good chance uh, that we will at some point need to destroy the uh, hunter at least in the last mission or in a few missions in between and the hunter really is is not um, is not insurable with uh, without psi operatives so the longer I think about it, the more realistic it becomes that three to four Psy Operatives is sort of uh, the team that we're going to uh, send on to the last mission. Uh, just a massive cluster F of 
Psy power, then a Templar as a frontliner um, and a specialist, so maybe Roby will not even make the cut, although he is a bond mate and so on and so forth. Uh, that is... The problem is the Ranger without uh, one of his core abilities uh, wielding a gun is just a wor worse version of a Templar. Um, not surprisingly so, because the Templar can only do melee, really. So, Roby in a final mission would probably be the weakest link, just due to being a, a Templar. Even the specialists are better due to their uh, abilities. But I would not need two specialists. Um, one is plenty, uh, just with the amount of healing. And the Psy operatives are so self-sufficient. You could probably run the last mission with four Psy operatives just using their uh, Psy powers. The reason why I'm saying that I might go for four Psy operatives is we need a lot of cooldowns. And as much as I love just playing efficient, once you have used your Null Lances and, um, uh, and your Blasts and your uh, Void Rifts, uh, your Soul Fires and your Void Rifts, once you've done that, that'll be like three to four rounds until you can do something again. So having, having enough to, so, so to speak, circle through uh, will be uh, plenty helpful. Also, four Dominations are pretty uh, absurd. Um, I like the idea of having just that massive amount of enemies. Maybe I'm even dominating a chrysalid and then um, starting to poison the enemies. You get those little chrysalid nests and all of a sudden there is, a, is an army of chrysalids uh, rushing over the map, but all of them are controlled by me. So that would really be um, thematically appropriate for a melee-only campaign. So, yeah. Just a bit of an outlook what uh, that campaign might entail, but this is all theoretical uh, talk. For now, we gotta survive, guys, and I hope you're staying with me until the bitter end. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, feel free uh, to leave a like and a comment down below. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe. That would actually mean a lot to me. Take care and bye-bye.